folks, I'm Ian Baker, and today we're going to go over the all-new 2020 Coleman Light 3215BH. Uh, I personally really like this bunkhouse model. I think they did a good job. It's a nice open floor plan, which we'll see in just a little bit. You'll see you have the slide over here with theater seats, a U-shaped dinette, and the theater seats are directly across from the TV. Plus up front, you still have this 60 by 80 residential queen size bed that you get in all Coleman light. So for an overall floor plan, I certainly enjoy it. For the kitchen, you'll see the 2020 model here, they redid some things, and again, I think they did a, a great job here in the kitchen. You will see that they have the thermofoil countertops, which, you know, it's kind of like a um, in-between, like your laminate countertops and your solid surface. But the nice thing about this is it's not super heavy like a solid surface is. When, when you're talking about a lighter weight travel trailer like this, this is an excellent option. You'll see it still allows you to undermount the bowl. It's an apron front. I, I really like that look, something that Cherokee used last year. Coleman brought in the line this year. Uh, kind of gives that residential feel. High rise pull out faucet there. And you have the decorative backsplash. It's like a, almost like a gray subway tile, which Again, you know, rather than just being like a sticker on the wall, you know, you actually have something here. So it's easier to clean. It's not just uh, aesthetically pleasing, it is functional. Right back in the corner of the countertop, you know, you have some prep space here, especially with the recessed countertop, but also you have an electrical outlet built right into the wall. So nice thing about having the L-shaped is because it's an interior wall, it allows them to run electric uh, through here. Whereas, you know, when you have a laminated product, it's tough to run electrical through the sidewalls or tough to repair. But when it's an interior wall, it makes it very easy. That gives you a great spot to set up your coffee maker. As I mentioned over to the side, you have your uh, flush mounted cooktop here, three burner. This does have the cover. So as I mentioned, you get that prep space. This is the Greystone. Um, you know, I've seen some more manufacturers use this. I personally like the Furion a little bit more. I just feel like it's uh, slightly higher quality, but you know, this still definitely serves the purpose. It gives you that prep space, still has the light up knobs, very similar to the Furion. And then you have the oven there underneath. If we take a look at the storage, pull that guy out, you'll see that that is fairly deep. You know, I might be able to fit some cooking or some camp size like uh, pots and pans in there. Over to the side here, you have three ball bearing drawers. You'll see that bottom one is nice and deep. The top two ones, not quite, but uh, you know you have uh, a lot of depth this way rather, I guess. So that way you have plenty of spot for some larger utensils like your flatware, or uh, I'm sorry, like your spatulas, serving spoons, big knives, things like that. And they have plenty of space underneath the sink for a uh, trash can. And for me, that's a big deal, right? I think they nailed it right there with the kitchen setup. I hate when manufacturers have it where I have to tie a bag to a pull. Uh, I think they did a good job. Along the top, you'll see additional storage. It is your frosted glass all the way through. Pretty standard storage there. Microwave, a little bit more streamlined hood. Again, the Greystone. You'll see the stainless steel panels on the front of your Dometic fridge freezer combo. Good space in there as well. That unit does run off both propane and electric. And as you'd expect in a travel trailer this size, of course, has automatic switchover. Now, one of the things I mentioned right away in, with this layout is the fact you have the TV right across from the theater seating. And this is a big deal for me, especially in bunk houses, because it's uh, harder to get this layout. You're seeing it increasingly in more and more layouts. And again, they did it here, uh, but I like this. You know, this is where chances are it will be here or in the dinette, which we'll take a look at in a little bit. Of course, both of these recline, super comfortable. You have the cup holders there as well. Um, also behind the TV, you'll see they put a decorative wall. I think that was a good choice too. Underneath, you have the uh, little multimedia center there. It has an HDMI port, so if you have some auxiliary equipment you need to plug in, it allows you to do that. Um, underneath a little bit further, you will see the fireplace. Now, the cool thing about the fireplace, folks, a lot of people see that and they're like, that's overkill, I don't need it in my travel trailer, but that is a good source of electric heat. So if you're camping somewhere, you don't want to use propane and you're not paying for the electricity at the campsite, that's basically free heat. Now, it's not going to heat up the whole camper. They'll do a good job of taking the chill off. And I love when they do this too. Behind the TV, you get the pantry. Um, another thing I really enjoy is the fact they put up the hanging rod here, right? I think they nailed it with that. I hate when manufacturers have this big space and it's only the shelves. You know, I may not need all this pantry space. I may want a, sp a space to hang my jackets, especially if you do cold weather camping. That gives you the opportunity to do that. Big slider door on here and a big entrance. So 
The thing I really like about this bunk room setup is not only is it spacious, but you have this big opening. And when you have little kids, this is awesome. They can run up and down here. You don't feel like you're closed off, right? Part of the reason I go camping is to feel connected to the family, and this still allows you to do that. But if you need the space, if you wanna stay up and play cards, kids need to go to bed, you can close the door and then they still have that privacy. But again, as you can see, it is nice and open, essentially a quad bunk back here. You have a single over double, 300 pound weight capacity on all the bunks. You know, I'll show you here. I am six foot tall. As you can see, I can scooch in. I do have enough space. You know, I'm pretty much head to toe here, but that's better than you get in a lot of them. You know, a lot of times a six foot adult can't sleep in there. And that goes for the top bunks here too, folks. 300 pounds, watch, I'll, oh, look at that flexibility. <laughs> I kid, I kid, but you know, I have a pillow here. I have plenty of space on a single bunk, which again, oftentimes you don't get, especially in a slide out. This does, of course, lock up into place just like so. And then underneath is your jackknife sofa. Now, I, I'm guessing because of size, they couldn't do like a, a trifold or a cube sofa. I would have preferred that just because a jackknife sofa isn't the most comfortable to sleep on, but it is still functional. You know, it, it does give you a place to sit down. And of course, you get all this storage there underneath, which when you have four bunks, you need all the storage you can get. That is good storage. Also, if you take a look over here, boom, hanging rod, nailed it, have to have it. Uh, I hang up a lot of the kids' clothes. I hate when in a bunk room, I don't have a spot to put them up. Underneath that, you have three drawers, plenty of storage, plenty of space. I really like what they did here. Making our way back out into the main living area, there is storage above the theater seats as well. And then it comes to the dinette. So this is something that Coleman did recently. And uh, as Sam and I were talking, Sam's my cameraman, if you've never met him, you will soon, but uh, him and I were talking kind of about this dinette and it's a little controversial, right? I'm kind of on the fence about it of whether I, I like it, whether I dislike it. The idea is that you have a U-shaped dinette, but you can turn the dinette, remove the back and have a standard one. So the table does have to be in a certain, uh, a certain direction and this is honestly wrong. It should be the other way around because as you can see right now, it's super tight in here. And this just doesn't work, right? If you're a little kid, maybe for an adult, it's not gonna happen. Let me show you here, see if we can do this. There we go. All right, so if we turn this around, you'll see on the bottom, you have four flanges. So the idea is you can put it sideways, right? Remove the back part, then you have a standard dinette or a U dinette. Should have been this way. And what I always do is if you kind of look underneath, you can take the flanges I just try to kind of set the flanges on top a little bit and then set them down in like that. And this is the orientation it should be. This gives oh, a little more room to get back here. But again, as you can see, it has its flaws, right? Now I have a, a bar right there, just hit my knee on it. So I, I'm a little torn, right? It, I, I see what they're trying to do. I see how it can be functional. I guess my question is, if you like it, would you use it? Would you convert from one to the other? Or would you prefer it just be one standard dinette? Let me know in the comments section and uh, we can kind of go back and forth. And you know, hey, cool thing about the job I have is we kind of have the power to make things happen, right? If we get enough people, we want to make changes, we can do it. So we make our way into the bathroom. It is a walkthrough bathroom. I know a lot of people don't love it for the obvious reasons, especially when you have kids, right? This is probably the biggest drawback to the floor plan in my opinion is if it's at night, the kids have to use the bathroom. It's all the way up here. It's a walkthrough, kind of closes you off, right? Uh, the other thing is there's not a lot of light. They only put one light in here. I would have liked to have seen another one right over to the side. That being said, everything else about it is, is fine, right? As far as leg space, plenty of leg room here. Even with the door shut, close that there. I still have good shoulder space, so no issues. The shower. Let's take a step in here. Whoop. Again, six foot tall, no issues, right? I have headroom even without the skylight. You're a little bit taller, you know, you could probably be six two. I know some tall people out there, lucky fellas, but uh, you have the head height there. So, you know, if you're a little bit taller, you can be in here. Hand wand, of course, to make showering a little bit easier. Kind of a decorative wall panel. I like that too, rather than being, you know, plain and boring. But again, as I mentioned, 
Um, you know, I just would have liked to have seen another light up there in case you're showering at night. On the other side, mirrored medicine cabinet. Great thing about the Coleman, you know, it's actually wood. It's not like a, a inexpensive plastic one. I like they kind of went the extra step there. You have the larger countertop here. So if you need, excuse me, you know, need to put something here, whether it's a, you know, hair dryer or makeup, whatever it may be, you have a little bit of countertop space, storage underneath, plumbing access, electrical outlet, basically everything that you need. Now, if we make our way up a little bit further, we get into the master bedroom. The cool thing about the master bedroom here, so you'll notice a couple things. One, you, there is plenty of storage on both sides. You'll see right there that you have your uh, hanging space. So you have your hanging rods on both sides, storage across the top, LED light underneath, pretty standard stuff. Underneath though, I like what they have done. You'll see good size nightstands and they actually put uh, tops on them, right? A lot of manufacturers just have like the plain panel wood tops, you know, kind of like you have right here. And a lot of times it feels like, you know, if you put any weight on it, everything's just gonna fall through. And that's not the case, right? These are nice and sturdy. You will notice the uh, USB ports if you need to charge a cell phone. And my favorite part, oh, by the way, electrical outlet here if you have a uh, CPAP machine. But back to what I was saying, my favorite part about the Coleman Light bedrooms is this is a 60 by 80 residential queen size bed. Folks, you're a taller person, your feet aren't gonna hang off. That's a huge deal for me. I hate when I go camping and my feet are hanging off the bed. Not the case at all here. And as you would expect, there is storage underneath if you need this storage space. Couple last things about the bedroom. You will see the nice wide door there. Uh, so, you know, again, if you have people sleeping, you need to come in and out of the camper, you have a secondary entrance. Right up top here is a vent, but more importantly, you'll see that this one is pre-wired for a second AC. So if you want, you know, if you plan on doing some camping in hot areas, this can accommodate that second AC. And lastly, you want a TV, that's where it mounts. There's your hookups. Now that we've seen the inside, let's take a look at some of the outside features on the 2020 Coleman Light 3215BH. Up front, this one comes with a power tongue jack. That'll save you probably 300, 350 bucks there. Of course, pretty obvious function, makes it much easier to hook up and disconnect from a tow vehicle. As you'd expect, there is a light on there and also a manual override. Behind that are two 20 pound propane tanks. You get the cover, rails for your battery, some diamond etch plating coming up the front, helping to protect that front end from some of the rocks and debris that may get thrown up by your tow vehicle. And this is a fiberglass unit with the gorgeous, what I call it, three quarter front cap. Now, the reason I call it that is because you'll see the seam here is still on the edge. It doesn't wrap around like a true front cap but it does still give a lot of aesthetics, provides it, you know, a little bit extra insulation value possibly from a little bit of air barrier that's in there. But either way, uh, it still does look really nice. It's nice and easy to clean. You have the LED lights on there too, helping that aesthetic piece uh, at night. Coming around to the side, solar prep. If you want solar, simply buy the portable panels. Now this one is Furion, uh, you know, so you probably best just to buy their panels for full functionality. They do have the controller built in the back, plug it in there already uh, pre-wired, that way it'll trickle charge your battery. The pass-through on here, another great thing about Coleman, folks, they have big pass-through compartments. This Coleman light you'll see has a covered hinge. If you have an uncovered hinge, it rusts out really easy. Then you have a bunch of rust coming down your door and that's unsightly, nobody wants that. So it's covered hinge on there, it is a magnetic latch and it is, or uh, sorry, magnetic catch and it is slam latch, right? There it goes, it slams just like you want it to, magnetic catch, Boom, now the kids aren't gonna break the clips. Take a look inside. Again, you can see how big and open this is. You have a ton of space, which is important because you need to bring a lot of things camping, especially if you're bringing four kids with you. LED light strip uh, stretches quite a long ways in there, kind of lights up the whole pass through, which is nice. Now, not only do you have a power tongue jack, you'll see you also have power stabilizer jacks. Now, please, please, please bear in mind, that is not power level, that is not auto level. Do not try to level the camper with those, you will break them. You still want to use your leveling blocks to level the camper out, but once you have it leveled, you can drop your stabilizer jacks and that will help, uh, you know, from the, the trailer rocking around a whole bunch as you are walking around inside. This is that secondary entrance I told you about in the bedroom. Pretty standard set of fold out steps here with the smaller grab handle. And this is pretty common. So another thing I want to hit on real quick, a lot of manufacturers uh, go to a little bit less expensive steps as well as the grab handle on a secondary entrance just because you're not using it as much. Um, and that's not for the manufacturer to try to save money, it's trying to save you money on the unit to try to bring the cost of the overall unit down. So you'll see that a lot and it is no exception here. When we go back to the main entrance, you'll see they upgraded some things. 
The power awning, touch a button to roll that guy out. Same thing to go back in. Super simple and easy to use. LED light strip, couple speakers out here. Those are controlled by that multimedia center inside I showed you underneath the TV, but it is Bluetooth capable. So if you want to sit out here in some chairs, connect to it via Bluetooth and play Pandora or Spotify, by all means, you can do that. You'll see here, uh, that is your fresh tank fill. If you're going somewhere you don't have city water, you want to make sure to fill the fresh water tank. Another great thing about the Coleman series, folks, they have big fresh water tanks. You can fill it up nice and easily right there. If you want an outside TV, you have electrical outlet, cable outlet, you are good to go. Beautiful aluminum alloy wheels. Check those bad boys out and they'll stay looking beautiful for years to come because again, you know, aluminum doesn't rust. Just takes a little bit of cleaner on there and they'll be bright and shiny. Underneath, this one does have a fully enclosed and insulated underbelly. Now, I'm not telling you to take it out in winter, right? Your valves and stuff are still uh, somewhat exposed. They're not fully insulated valves, so your valves could freeze. You'd have some other issues. But if you plan on camping later in the fall, right, where it's not, you know, getting down to single digits, if it's going to stay above freezing or maybe just dip below it, chances are you'll be just fine in the Coleman light. The main entrance, as I promised, upgraded steps. You have the more ride step above steps. Why? Because these are the steps you're gonna be using probably 95% of the time. Uh, a great step system. You have the aluminum treads on here, which are fantastic. They don't rust the grip tape. You know, the bigger grab handle to make it easier to enter the camper. Just bear in mind the one downside of these is this right here. You'll see the unit's all wet because, well, we're in Michigan and it's snowing and now we're in a warm area, so everything's thawing out. But when it's wet, these steps actually store inside the camper. And when you flip it up, you'll see all the water drips down in the camper, right? It's, it's a downside of all these step systems. Um, a fairly easy fix, just make sure, you know, you have a towel, you wipe it off. If it's raining out, flip it up, wipe it off when it's inside. You know, I, I think, in my opinion, the pros outweigh the cons there, but again, let me know your thoughts. And then right in the back, again, covered hinge, we have the magnetic catch. This is the outside kitchen, one of my favorite part about the bunk model. You have your fridge here, you have to have a place for your, uh, you know, beverages, condiments. You've got a little ice tray there, so you can stick it up in the little freezer area. You'll see over to the side some storage as well as an electrical outlet, and you have the cooktop. Pull this guy out, boom, there it is, two burner. Little bit of extra prep space here, but if we come around to the side, take a look at that. Now, if I pull it out, it's gonna drip on here. Ah, probably minor, uh, minor design flaw if it's raining. Not that you'd be cooking outside if it's raining, but um, you will see right there, you do have the pull-out countertop. We'll have to clean that off, but that is, that is uh, a very nice feature. Now, again, as you can see, it's dripping. The gutters are doing what they're supposed to, right? Taking the water to the front and the back of the campsite because there was snow up on the roof and now it's melting. Right back here, outside shower, hot and cold water access, square tubular bumper with end caps, gives you a very convenient spot to put your sewer hose. As I always mention, if you have an outside kitchen, you probably want to put your sewer hose over here, right? You don't want that thing smelling up the area over there. Spare tires mounted to it, very easy to get to. You have to love that. Right up top, you will see this one has backup camera prep. So if you want a backup camera, having the prep there makes it much easier to install. Coming around to the side, tucked in between the two slides here, you will see your cable inlet there as well as your 50 amp power inlet. Now 50 amp because, well, we have a fireplace inside, plus if you recall in the bedroom, we had that second AC prep. And anytime you have two ACs, automatically you're moving up to 50 amp. Right down here, you will see termination. Um, you'll see both your black and gray tank valve. And as I mentioned, folks, they are not fully insulated, right? The valves are actually right here. So that's again why you don't want to take this one in uh, you know, the dead of winter. Black tank flush makes it nice and easy to wash out the black tank. And if you have city water at the campsite, that is where you'll plug it in at. All right, folks, and that wraps it up. Again, this is a 2020 Coleman Light 3215BH. If you're interested in this unit and you'd like price and availability, click on the link in the description below. Also, let me know what you liked, what you didn't like, what you think they nailed, or what you think they missed in the comments section below. Thanks again for watching. I'm Ian Baker, and let's go Camps!